What's going on everybody? Kenan Ups here with another Mega Man X Dive character overview. Today we're going to be talking about Halloween Roll. Uh, video is going to be a little bit late this week, but you know what? Better late than never. So let's take a look at Halloween Roll. Alright, so let's take a look at Halloween Roll here. She's adorable as she usually is, which um, I guess that's normal that they like to do that for Roll. Um, also, we like that Eddie is here as well. Uh, they seem to have made her a magical girl themed unit, which I mentioned in my uh, character overview, or my character overview, uh, character preview, and reminds me of Sailor Moon. But let's take a look at her active skills. First, we have Magical Cannon. She has a huge room forward and fucking 150% attack damage to all targets within range. The range on this is actually pretty solid. So, that's something nice as well. She's also a zoner type character if you want to use her in PvP, which I think is where she's best suited for, to be honest. But. For the modifier tip, we have Magic Discharge Defense. When activating a skill, you get a defense enhancing status, which increase, which decreases damage by 30%, which is very, very nice. Uh, speed, same thing for speed, but increases movement speed by 37.5%. Again, very, very nice. And then we have Magic Discharge Attack. Uh, same thing as the previous skills, but for attack. Again, a nice thing to have. However, I don't really like it all that much because of things like Grudge Axe. So you can just get these yoinked off of you. Or removed with interference status so that is something that I don't really like about the, like they they're all buffs but I'm pretty sure no 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 like I'm like a hundred percent sure like the it wasn't really as common in in the um, in the Taiwan version because zero nightmare didn't have his DNA DNA wasn't even a thing you know at that point Neither was Criminal Valve Strike Zero or Grudge Axe when Halloween Roll initially released. So, that kind of changes things for our meta and global a little bit, but uh, that's just what's going to happen when the order of things get shifted around and things like that. So, next up we have Magical Orb. Summon several orbs by your side. The orbs will automatically lock on enemies in range. The orbs will disappear after they have attacked or after 6 seconds. So, let's take a look at the modified chips on this one. Power increase increases damage by 5%. Flight assistance device range and flight speed have increased by 10%. And then we have Magical Devour. Randomly remove a buff when hitting a target. And that's very, very nice as well. So it's kind of like you have your own little mini Grudge Axe like effect on Halloween Roll. And something I just wanted to note here is that the cooldown on these are pretty short. I think we're at like a five and a five second cooldown here and a six second cooldown here so that's pretty nice as well if we have any type of cooldown reduction inherently on halloween roll that will be great let's take a look at the passive skills changing into magical gal lux onto a target that has been hit with the magical orb when the target is hit again with magical orb the attack will be an additional 13 and a half percent damage and damage can be stacked up to and which can be stacked up to five stacks which is nice also means you're just going to be doing more damage just because of the, the lock on status as well, which is quite nice. Magical Tor increase the damage rate of Magical Cannon by 5%. Uh, sure, that's not too bad. So 5% more of 150%, which I, I kind of, uh, this one I, I would like to be a little bit better, but what can you do? Magical Oil Transform, increase the number of orbs summoned by Magical Orb by one and reduce the interval between the shots. I think this one's okay. Again, it's something that I would like to be a little bit better, but you know what? It's fine. Impenetrable formation. When using character skills, cause defocus to all targets within the magical transformation, running, rendering them unable to hit their targets temporarily. Now, this is actually huge, especially considering what's going, what we have going on in global at the moment, in terms of what's being used pretty frequently. Now, for those of you that don't know, defocus is a status effect that, like it says, it forces targets to miss their attacks. It's basically a good version of blind. <laughs> um, what I mean by a good version of blind is the blind status effect isn't all that good. Like it like puts like a blotch of like black on your screen, kind of like the oh god, I forgot the enemy name. Uh, the blooper from Mario Kart, if you know that. But like you can still see, right? Like you can still see, you can still lock on, and you can still hit your attacks. Well, defocus. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry I laughed, but that just reminds me of Focus Flash from Pokemon, and <laughs> because it, it misses when you need it to hit. But anyway, defocus makes it so that their attacks just miss, 
And I believe the focus is only for two seconds. However, what that means is if for whatever reason you're close to a Grudge Axe user, uh, you pop them with a with a character skill, and then all of a sudden they can't steal your buffs from magical uh, magical cannon here. Unless, of course, they have defocus resistance, in which case they're just a better player. Like, I don't know what to tell you at that point. If they came ready for you as you're playing Halloween Roll and hit them with defocus, I, I, I just don't know what to say. <laughs> like, that that just seems like like it's targeted <laughs> targeted towards role players at that point. Since we don't have many characters in Global that can inflict defocus right now, I think maybe Harp Note can do it. I think those are the only two. We don't have any weapons that inflict defocus at the moment either. So I think it's only roll and harp note. At least those are two that come to my mind immediately. We don't have as many as the Talon version has just yet. But anyway, moving on. Next up, we have magical type. Ma blah, barrage type magical gal. Increased damage by 10%. Reduced damage taken by 10% when equipping a launcher. So that's amazing. Just by existing, you get 10% uh, damage and 10% damage mitigation with a launcher. So that's good. On top of that, like I said, roll is going to be a, a zona type character, so we will want your typical launcher type weapons on her anyway. Well, I'll say typical launcher, but I'll get into that later. When hitting a target locked on with magical cannon, or when hitting a target with magical cannon, restore HP equal to 15% of your attack. So that's good as well. So now your magical cannon gets a little bit more versatility, as now you get a buff from it, you get your defocus from it. And then you get your heal as well. Now, I do want to just kind of point out here that I was... I didn't mention that Protein of Shield will stop the defocus, but like that... That's just a thing that's going to happen anyway. But I figure I should say it for just in case maybe there's like some newer players or something that aren't as familiar with the game. Just so like they know that there's you don't need defocus resistance to stop this. All right, moving on to her DNA, which she doesn't have in global yet, but again, as per usual, I just want to cover it so that people will know what to expect when her DNA drops in the global version, which will probably be next Halloween, I think. First up, we have Magical Defense, will not take any damage using Magical Cannon. Great, you get iframes on Magical Cannon, that makes Magical Cannon a whole heck of a lot better. Then we have Cannon Wielding Enhancement. The damage boosting effect of one type weapon increased by 50% and the damage type reduction effect is increased by 50% when used by Barrage type Magical Gal. Basically, instead of 10%, it gets bumped up to 15% because it increases it by 50%. So the, the base is 10%, 50% of 10 is 5, so then it will go up to 15% there, which is still good. Just existing with a cannon, you get 15 damage and 15 damage mitigation. That's not too bad. And it doesn't count as a buff either, so that's even better. Then Continuous Barrage. When Magical Cannon hits the target, you'll be able to use Magical Cannon again. This deck can only be used once more for 8 seconds. Again, that's pretty nice. The only downside with her DNA is that I fear that by the time she gets it, um, she's just going to be outclassed, right? She's still, I think she's still going to be good for a very, very you know, decent amount of time in the global version of the game. But I don't think that her dropping without her DNA is going to help that at all. If she had her DNA, that'd be amazing right now. She's still very, very good in PvP, but I don't think... By the time she gets her DNA, I, I think it'll be a lot harder to make use of her and get value out of her. But let's take a look at her unique... You can mind DNA here. Anomaly Avoidance. When causing defocus and target and defocus status, gain for a of shield and suffer no negative status effect. This effect will be triggered after 8 second cooldown. Again, with the... Friend of Shield, I would really like them to alter it so that each one says most status effects because we do have things that can just ignore Friend of Shield now because of power creep, but that's just a personal thing. To my knowledge, Roll's the only character with Anomaly Avoidance? I don't know of any other character at the top of my head that might have. Maybe Harp Note? I, I really can't think of another one, but um, because uh, she has Boss Sailor, Boss Sentinel. Homeopathy Adaptability, Homeopathy Amp, uh, Launcher Amp, and Launcher Adaptability, which are very, very nice as well. You definitely might want one of these two, maybe in your card setups if you don't get it here. Uh, boss Sentinel, Boss Killer, okay, not too much good there. Over here, we have Confusion Res, Out of Control Res. Out of Control Res will definitely help a little bit more versus Grudge Axe. 
Uh, what do we else do we have here? Transmit. Uh, defocus is very, very nice as well. That'll up your damage amp with roll. Because she inherently inflicts defocus, so that's really, really good. Outside of that... I don't think there's too much else that's good here, but... Yeah, you don't have... You have boss killers. Is that a player? Can we play her sentinel, huh? Well, she does decent damage with her skills anyway, like 150%. And then this... Oh, this is this is not the percentage here. Alright, so let me check the wiki real quick. Okay, the magical orbs, according to the wiki, seem to do 90%. Ugger attack per hit, or 90% uh, attack damage, which is pretty nice. And there's like four to five orbs, and I think that the fifth orb comes in from this right here. I believe. So that's that's critical information to know about roll, which is very, very good. And that's going to be it for rolls kit, so let's take a look at some weapons that will go well with her. So, with roll in particular, she has actually has some inherent affinity for cannons or launchers which is very very nice however something to note about roll is that one of her skills the the magical cannon actually the that locks on based on what your weapon is locked onto, as opposed to her her orbs which doesn't really like her orbs just kind of just, just track anyway a little bit naturally so that that's a little bit better so with that in mind you're going to want to use things with a little bit longer range so it's micro buster is a decent option explosive bolt is a solid option as well it has really long range has player killers that's very very nice but because she wants launcher type weapon oh oops i knew there was a reason why i started up there uh cannon god kind of as per usual cannon god has fantastic range pierces terrains has a immobilization chance so you're definitely going to want to make use of that if you're using roll Turbo Cannon is also a fantastic option. Just the inherent iframes that you get from it are very, very nice. And as per usual, like I say every time, the the iframes are part of overheat protection. And if you're going to be using overheat protection, most people recommend that you don't get your Crushing Energy Tank because this means it takes you a bit longer to get to your an empty clip for this so that it takes you a bit longer to get to your iframes. So there is that. Uh, you could also use the Death Diffusion if you really want. Death Diffusion is out now, so I can show it. I don't know if it has its, its hidden skill in Global or not, though. I'm going to assume that it doesn't because it just came out. <laughs> but I knew off chance that it might have its hidden skill. Let's take a look at some of the stuff here. It has Confusion, Confusion Resistance, uh, Crit Amplification, and Continuous Damage Special Attack. So you can pick one of these. Uh, I think you would want to go with Continuing Damage Special Attack over Confusion and PvP. Oh, well, you can go with either one, actually. I just think Continuing Damage Special Attack is a little bit more... Near more universal, I guess, is the word I want to use for that. This, I think this is better for PvP, but this allows you to get more use out of it in PvP and PvE. Uh, as for this, it just has some decent things on it. It has Burn, so you get the dot damage with Burn. It has a pretty big clip too. It has uh, 33 once you get improved energy shot, which is quite nice. is isn't bad. And then uh, the downside is that the burn isn't guaranteed, unfortunately. So you'd have to be careful about that. However, I think this weapon is decent in a PvE scenario, which you can also use rolling. I think she's better for PvP. But if you want to use her in PvE, I think this is decent for her bosses. It's because of the burn and the continuous special attack. And another weapon you can use for PvE with roll, I think it would be decent, is the Bubble Bomber. Just because the Bubble Bomber has access to healing. Roll already has inherent healing in her kit, but this has the Oracle of Life when you get hit, restore HP. And then it also has the oh, is it? regeneration here as well to restore HP. So there is that you can make use of as well. And also in PvE, you can make use of the Extraordinary Mortar. The only downside with it is that Extraordinary Mortar's shield is pretty weak. That's really the only downside with it. Although, it is pretty nice because of that shield. And you can get it basically for free. I think you start the game and they give you enough memories for it. Alongside, you can... You can uh, reach level 5. You just make memories for the Extraordinary Mortar. So, this is something that you can use in PV, PvE. 
pretty decently. You can use this in PvP as well. I don't really recommend it though. It's not all that great. It does have access to this though, which you know that that's pretty useful. The down, like I said, the downside is that the energy shield is pretty weak, and I don't think it has a very good hidden skill set either. And the tracking effect, we got the adaptability. Mm, yeah, those could be better. All right, now let's go take a look at some cards in my parable with Halloween roll. Again, I think kind of as per usual, it's gonna it's gonna slightly depend on what you're gonna do with your character's DNA and what weapon you use. But since roll inherently has a weapon type she's good with, you're probably gonna want to lean more towards that. But some generically good things that I typically recommend are things like player killer. Uh, the weapon amplification that the character has inherently, or maybe some kind of defensive options. However, Akuma just has a Master of the Fist. It stacks with Player Killer, so you don't have to ever worry about Master of the Fist not stacking with Player Killer. So the Akuma card from the Street Fighter event is very, very nice there for PvP. The M. Bison card also has Player Killer as well. It has Confusion Resistance too, if you really want that, I guess. But... Since those cards are event limited, maybe you want a generic card that's player killer as well. I say generic, but Life Aura, which you can get in the shop, has player killer too, as does the X4 Sigma card. Violin also has the player killer passive, and so does Mac, which is an A rank card here. A red A rank card right there has player killer. So those are some good options for that, should you need them. The Chitonajan card has Launcher Amplification, which is something you might want to look into. It's not the most potent Launcher Amplification, but just having the skill here should give you an idea of what to look for with some cards. A card that might be kind of interesting here is the Members of the Resistance, which I believe you get, from, you get access to from your guild. It has Double Amplification, Machine Gun, and Launcher which is okay, you might have to, if you want to make use of this, you'd have to put on a machine gun as well, but it also has out of control resistance, which can help a little bit if you get hit with grudge so you don't have to deal with the out of control. Final Mark II and Goliath have access to launcher amplification too, but if you raise them to five stars, they will get access to launcher amplification three, and if you're not rocking that in your DNA, you can get that here, which is why I'm kind of just like, it kind of depends on what you're going to have in your in your random DNA and what you're going to do with your cards. Just because they won't stack if you get launcher, let's say if I get a roll launcher M3 and slot 5 on my roll, and I have a 5 star version of Valmark 2 and Goliath, those two won't stack. It have to be, they have to be different numbers. You could also opt for the Sakura card, as this has access to Defocus Special Attack 2, and the focus special attack three when it's at five star so you can stack this if you want because sakura card is red so you go red red yellow and i believe that might stack with the base card the life aura does not stack with this but the sakura card does give you more damage if you're attacking someone that's inflicted with the defocus status effect which is what role should be inflicting quite often because of her passives Elf's Convergence is another card that has access to double implication for machine gun and launcher as well as out of control resistance, which you can get from your guilds as well. But I believe your guild has to be A rank at the very least in order to get this card. I could be wrong about the rank for that, but I do remember getting this from her. Oh, right. I think that will be it for Halloween roll. I think she's a nice unit. If you pull for her, you'll probably enjoy playing her as long as you like playing zoner type units, that is. And PvP. That's a different voice line, actually. I didn't know she had that voice line. I thought it would be largely the same as base role, kind of like how Sigma still says let's go X. But anyway, it's going to be it for this video. If you did enjoy, I appreciate you guys to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll channel to go share and enjoy the content. And uh, as per usual, I'd like to give a shout out to my YouTube channel members and my patrons for continuing to support me and allowing me to do what I do. If you'd like to support me, on Patreon as a channel member, you can find information how to do that down below in the video description or just below the video. And I will see you guys in the next video later.